Moorings, a place your boat can call its own, where you can moor your boat once you have it. It makes a great deal of difference to what you get out of boating. Do you want to be part of a marina lifestyle and hang the cost? What about linear moorings? City or countryside? How about club moorings? Do you want to be able to pop down to the boat after work and, or explore different parts of the system? Once you've bought your boat, you need somewhere to keep it. That's when you're not cruising, of course. And that's more to do with your lifestyle than anything. What do you want from your boat and how much time can you give it? For some people, it's simple. The boat's a sort of floating holiday home, somewhere they can escape to for a bit of relaxation. And they may not even want to travel very far on the boat. For them, a pretty relaxed rural location for a marina or linear mooring is ideal. A pub or a restaurant close to hand would be a bonus and some nice short weekend journeys if the sun is shining and they're feeling adventurous. Having facilities like electricity and water to hand is an added bonus to any holiday home and especially useful if you have plans to tinker with the boat and need to operate power tools and all the rest. If you have the waterways bug, of course, you may want to explore as much of the system as possible. And our solution to this was to moor in a series of locations, marinas and bankside, about a two hour journey from home. That way you could escape on a Friday and even be on the boat in the summer in time to travel a few miles before dark. Location then rather than facilities became the priority. So we might be willing to accept basic marinas if they're situated on or near a junction with plenty of different routes to take. For other people, of course, security is of prime importance and they'll probably become marina, marina or, or boatyard customers, especially if they're not inclined to DIY maintenance and repairs and the establishment where they moor has experts on hand. But if you're a traveller and uh, you take your boat out of the marina as soon as you arrive and only return it when you're setting off back to your home, then it doesn't really matter that you're cheek by jowl with other boats and the only view out of the window is the vessel next door. If you want to stay in one place with your new acquisition, then you'll be looking for a view, preferably a bit of countryside, and that probably means a, a rural mooring. I would just say uh, don't rule out the urban option completely. A mooring in the heart of a great city like Birmingham or Manchester, Leeds, perhaps even London if you can afford the fees, gives you city breaks all year round for little or nothing. So let's have a look at the options again. The uh, Canal and River Trust constantly tells us that it's looking after 2,000 miles of navigable waterways. It also reckons there are over 35,000 boats on the system. So that's around 17 boats for every mile of water, which perhaps explains why some boaters are always moaning about having to slow down to pass moored vessels. Of course, it's not as simple as that as one uh, development of the leisure age on the canals has been the creation of marinas, inland versions of the yachting marinas of the coast, although often not as glamorous. Surprisingly, although the Trust and British Waterways before it uh, have to license marinas uh, to connect them to the system and have a whole business unit dedicated to helping outside companies establish new marinas, uh, Canal and River Trust say it doesn't keep a record of marina berth capacity or levels of occupation. Simple observation. Anybody on the waterways shows that the number of marinas has increased substantially in recent years, certainly to the point in the Midlands that owners of existing marinas have been complaining vociferously about overcapacity. A few years ago, I would have been warning any boat buyer to sort out a mooring first, as they were in short supply. That's no longer the case, and although large established marinas in popular spots are still attempting to bring in more than three, three and a half thousand a year for a 60-foot boat and closer to five or six thousand a year nearer to London, 
It's also the case that there are more special offers to be seen and some marinas are breaking ranks and selling a 60 foot berth for around 1500 pounds, all in order to ensure their berths are fully occupied. Boats in berths, you see. A much increased number of marinas also offer winter only berths at reduced rates, a sure sign of under occupancy. A Canal and River Trust also sells online moorings, usually on the non towpath side of canals, but sometimes on the towpath. Uh, some through its auction system, some on a first come, first served basis. These long term moorings have a variable level of facilities and are often simply a place to tie the boat when not in use, with equally variable levels of security. The auction system, originally put in place to ensure that such moorings fetched a, a market price and didn't compete unfairly with marinas or other private mooring suppliers, has been unpopular with boaters from its inception and has consistently produced anomalous results. A growing number of these CRT moorings no, are no longer occupied and that's linked to the increased number of uh, vacancies which don't attract any bids under the auction system and are withdrawn. So the new boat owner, tempted by the generally lower price of these CRT moorings, needs to be aware that some auctions uh, can be just the opposite, can be fiercely fought and the price can escalate out of all recognition. Now the third option for a mooring is the linear mooring offered by some boatyards and many farmers in rural areas like here on the Shroppy. Prices tend to hover just above the price of CRT online moorings and maybe a little higher if electricity and water is on offer. These moorings are rarely empty and you may need to join a waiting list. Tucked away on old wharves and in disused canal basins and sometimes on a stretch of offside moorings are many canal clubs and societies and some of them operate their own moorings, often at very reasonable prices, and sometimes even sell cheap diesel, coal and chandlery, as well as offering a social life, perhaps with a clubhouse or bar. These are difficult for the new boat owner to get to know unless they live nearby, as they tend to be run by local enthusiasts, and you only come across them as you explore the system. However, if you have a, selected an area where you want to moor your boat, it's worth checking to see if there is a local boat club. Go and visit them, take a look at what they have to offer and what they seek in return. Most will be fully booked, but they will have waiting lists and uh, some give priority to people who demonstrate a willingness to join in, in working parties, to man or woman the bar, and be an active participant in club life. Those linked to canal restoration schemes are especially interesting. In theory, of course, even if uh, you're a holiday boater, you can declare yourself a continuous cruiser, volunteering to move your boat every 14 days and be on a journey. Discussions about the length of that journey are constantly debated, uh, but meeting with the CRT guidelines is certainly more onerous if you have to keep travelling to your boat every two weeks, even in winter. There's also the option of a winter mooring and cruising in the summer, and that can be in marinas or under the somewhat confusing CRT system. So you have to make your mind up. Well, perhaps you don't. You don't have to finally decide irrevocably where you're going to tie your boat. Most marinas only look for a one-year contract and will accept something shorter. Even the CRT auction system allows you to bail out after six months of the initial three-year deal. Find somewhere you think will serve your needs best and at the best price for a year or so and keep your eyes open for something different or better. Moorings are not in short supply if you're flexible about location and don't insist on the latest in luxury. Even if you do want the best spot in the country with, I don't know, plug-in plumbing and high-speed internet, it's probably available as most boaters just can't afford they, that sort of thing these days. So a mooring doesn't really tie you to any particular spot. And that's the point, really. Mm -hmm.